so my my theory on it is that on the on, there is a a value of mental release, right? So there's that that I've I've made peace with and understand better myself and the events that happen, and I've transmuted them into a meaning that serves me, right? Um, and there's another dynamic that isn't actually the body, and 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 so um, I believe that you know the that trauma is literally a um, an energy store and takes a shaving off of your flow state, and in that flow state comes the the um, the absorption of energy and the ex- expansion and expulsion of energy, right? The usage of your energy, right? Yeah. And so, and so if you, um, if one of the reasons why I think monks go on the mountain and those that are, are absolutely clear come down and have the ability to go into this unconscious competence into this, you know, flow state ninja, like, um, you know, uh, presence is because, um, you know, and is because of this, uh, the work that's been done to clear some of these things, to cut cords from, you know, the things that are binding your energy. Welcome to Far Out with Faust, everybody. I am Faust Chicho, and today I'm joined by the new reigning champion, three-time, wait, my, is it three-time or four-time, Lynn? I, I mean, I'm losing count, brother. I just, I, mean, I just like getting far out with you. <laughs> <laughs> Lynn Fisher, everybody. Uh, this is the fourth, I think, it's, if you want to count the non-solo podcast, then it's the fourth time, yeah, is which is fourth, definitely yeah, yeah. The, 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 the championship. Um, of returning guests, Lynn Fisher. Thank you for beaming in, brother. It's a pleasure yeah, to have you back on. Uh, you know, I'm one of your biggest fans, so I'm honored to be here. Honored to share. I love connecting with you. Uh, we just had a great, you know, off-camera preamble, which is always how it rolls between us. So thanks yeah. for having me. Really appreciate it. Absolutely, bro. So listen, um, for all the new subscribers that have you know jumped on board the ship since last time you were on, give them a, a quick you know rundown of of, of what what you've been up to. And definitely, you know, what, what you're doing now. Um, so then we'll get into some, some fun topics. Yeah, for sure. Just a little bit of history on me. Um, I have been, uh, I've come full circle. I've been, uh, you know, spent 30 years almost in, you know, fortune 500 corporate America, chief strategy officer, chief marketing officer. So I've got this really, um, back laced white collar, um, background and, um, over the last 10 years, I've been, you know, morphing and transforming myself into more of my true self, which has been um, honoring the artist inside. And that artistry has come out in so many fantastic ways. Um, um, some of my most recent companies that I'm currently working with and, uh, and or are partnered in, um, you know, top of the list is in Harmony Interactive, um, which is a company that produces biohack technology for the conscious and uh, creates brain entrainment, which um, is actually part of what I wanted to talk about today. Uh, I'm also um, involved with a company called 4D Fun, and they're a, a metaverse company at the bleeding edge of uh, of you know, video capture and um, essentially creating avatars, uh, high res avatars for the metaverse. And, uh, and amongst all these other things, I've been, uh, you know, also doing a, a number of uh, art shows as an immersive artist. I'm a metaphysical surrealist. Uh, incredible like, artist, incredible thanks. artist. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and so my art is now transitioning into, uh, the metaverse, which is, uh, scenes.io. It's, uh, going to be launched in uh, the next couple of weeks. Nice. I'm the only art gallery in the virtual space amongst a plethora of huge names, music acts. So, Very cool. uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty exciting. So, um, yeah, I've, I, you know, I've really in the last, uh, I think six to eight seven, eight years, um, I've really learned uh, what it means to actually have your muse come out and, and have your martial artist and your artist come out to play, you know, nice. more. And, and that's really, um, you know, the, the other thing I've been doing, which is what I wanted to speak about um, mostly, is um, this work I've been um, doing with professional athletes called Life Force Energy Coaching. And, um, and really, it's, uh, it's really all about, you know, um, 
unearthing the true artist inside the martial artist for competitive athletes and you know for you know traditional artists you know the muse to come out and play and you know it's this idea of unconscious competence um that is um, engineered so it's not just like hey what just happened how that well, how did i get over here and wait I scored. right yeah um you know and so you know we, we work on a flow state and um, energy flow using chronic energy as part of the energy source and, and drawing in energy from the field um you know and aligning to your true self where um you know a lot of athletes are athletes because their parents want them to be and they just have yeah. to be fantastically gifted and they never cross the chasm of owning right uh, the so story much. Yeah. themselves in a way that lets them you know come full force to play like you know it's it's like you're playing on you're driving a car with uh, 12 cylinders you're only using eight you know so Absolutely. yeah there's a number of other dynamics to it but um but really it's about helping helping athletes and high uh, earning uh, professionals understand what's really underneath it all to gain maximum fulfillment under the you know the yeah. weight and pressure of, of 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 achievement right that science of achievement yeah. repeating that over and over again so so yeah i'm i'm super focused on um on people <laughs> everything you know i love to do has a personable outcome and um you know i've been working most closely with cody crowley as of late and uh and so um you know he's been what's cody's a- nickname again Cody the Crippler Crowley. The Crippler, actually, that's uh, right. The Crippler. The Crippler is actually an old moniker that um, I'll tell you a little story about that at some point. Uh, but okay. but he's actually the Warrior of Light. Um, Cody Love. Crowley, the Warrior of Light, and, and he's the Crippler, right? So uh, one little note, um, you know, in in kind of set this all up is that Cody is uh, an incredible human being and somebody I respect and admire quite a bit. And it's not because he's, you know, 20, you know, 21 and 0, about to be 22 and 0, but, uh, and a welterweight professional boxer, but he's metamorphosizing. He's going through some incredible transitions and transformations that are so diametrically opposed. Uh, his true nature and his gift and mastery yeah. skill set, it, it's diametrically opposed. I mean, he's yeah. an empath, healer, energy worker, and he's come to realize this, um, you know. Wow. It, it, over the last couple of years. And so he's like, do I even want to fight anymore? Like, I don't want to hurt anybody. Dude, it's, I'm like, yeah. So pretty incredible transition. And, yeah. and how he's now how he's trying, how he is working with the these archetypes that live inside of him mm-hmm. that he wants to honor. And it's a whole resifting and shuffling. And so the the biggest thing is 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 what I help you know people like Cody is and others is to realize that there's this game within the game. And that, that game within the game is the mental game. It's the narrative that you play um, for yourself, to yourself, to others. It's the um, the shame of winning, if you can believe that. There's oh, yeah. the, um, the 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 imposter syndrome. Like, I feel like an imposter. This this couldn't be me. Like, not right. owning yourself fully. So there's all these dynamics that somebody brings to the court, brings to the field, brings to the ring, and you don't even see it because these people are professionals and those who rise to the top are able to manage all the BS, you know, yeah. and, and deal with the media and have this foundation that is unshakable. Right. So that mental game, you know, uh, is the most powerful thing I can impart and help people discover within themselves. And what happens when that is not in place is usually not pretty. It, you know, it's usually akin to a car wreck. I mean, I, and I, I don't say that. Um, I, I mean that in, in a, I say that as a pun, but that literally yeah. is sometimes how um, these things come to a head, you know, like in the case of Tiger Woods, um, you know, he, uh, that's a pre a perfect example of someone who, you know, phenomenal ability, huge talent conditioned um, to perfection, mm-hmm. you know, and that gets you so far, but until you can <laughs> start to look at some of the shadows and start to do some of the work um, and, and really make peace with who you, who you are. You, those, those things don't go away. People don't realize this, you know what I mean? And they, they will come out and they will affect your performance or your life in one way or the other. That is just it's very true. That's, that's how I see it. And, and uh, that's been my experience with it. Yeah. So there's a difference between people like Cody Crowley, you know, 21 and 0 on his way up about to, you know, fight for the world championship uh, and uh, somebody like Tiger Woods, who had 
you know, reached the pinnacle of his success uh, and was traversing through it with, you know, for years and years being, you know, the goat. And, you know, and I believe that there's a different psychology that's happening, you know, between these two types of, um, you know, people in their trajectory, in their careers. Um, and yeah, it is a train wreck to see somebody that has such presence, poise, class, you know, on, on, on a golf course to have yeah. human, natural, everyday emotions. Oh my gosh, how could we ever allow that right. to happen? But the reality is, is that, you know, when you reach that point and your feet don't touch the ground, because nobody lets your feet ever touch the ground, you yeah. kind of feel like you can fly anywhere and you're invincible. And, you know, Sometimes, you know, you get the better of yourself and you have to reel yourself yeah. in. And some people don't have a, you know, some, anything to reel themselves in with. So, no, I know. yeah, I mean, you know, for Cody, it's um, it's more about him, um, you know, understanding his true self, understanding the, the nature of the external energy form that is the pressure and the cooker that um, that comes with you know, being on his trajectory. And, um, and so, you know, he's really sensitive. Like he, he has to take time for himself in the mountains, like quite often, which is yeah. really good for him, but it's more than just solitude. And, you know, just being a fighter, he's out there decompressing, connecting with nature, uh, you know, with squirrels and, you know, you know, hummingbirds, like he's, he's that dude. Right. And it's really kind of an interesting dichotomy to see him, you know, fight in the ring and have him, you know, do the things he's, you know, doing, uh, knowing, you know, this other archetype that, that lives within, uh, Cody. So, you know, that was one of the first things that we did was like, start to talk about all the different archetypes that exist in, in his yeah. being and start to honor them and understand them as individuals. Um, and then, you know, um, yeah, it was it, the work that, that he's done thus far to get to this point is pretty amazing. And considering he was, you know, not going to fight two fights ago. He was going to hang it all up. He had wow. neck injury and had, you know, no motivation um, and uh, was, you know, in a kind of a dark place. So that's where we met. Wow. That's intense, man. Um, and, and it's, you know, we all have this dual nature and we all have these archetypes, you know, and it's like, sometimes they're very conflicting <laughs> and, and it's, it goes beyond just, you know, this conditioning in this life. I think, I think that we bring a lot of things, you know, just to keep it a little farther out, not that I have to try because this is what comes to my mind, but you know, we, we, we bring these archetypes with us. We are, we are such an eclectic mix uh, of these incredible, uh, you know, genetics that we've been hybridized with. And, you know, okay. some, some of us have more of one than the other. And so it's, just, it's, a, it's amazing to see how that plays out in this, in this three-dimensional matrix that we live in. And uh, yeah. sometimes there's a, there's a bit of a conflict, you know, you, you've got part of your DNA is very much a warrior ilk, you know, and then another part is very much a healer ilk. And so it's like uh, you have this desire to, right. to go to battle it, but you know, you, on the other hand, you're programmed to pull your punches because you don't want to hurt anyone. So it's like, man, it kind of goes, it, it, it goes that deep. And then there's yeah, this condition. It does. It, yeah. it does. And that philosophy is part of, you know, the, not only his challenge, but it's also the, the, the essence of his solution, his ultimate solution. I told him this when I first met him and, and we dropped in, uh, in a, you know, in a men's group when I first met him. And we had uh, some, you know, some plant medicine that that was bringing us to some, you know, real core honesties. And and he sat down and shared some things with me that were, you know, you know, a trauma, you know, in his in his childhood. And yeah. um, and, and, you know, we had a chance to you know talk a lot about that, plus, you know, the other dynamics. But really, at the end of it, I was like, I go, man, I think I can help you if you if you'd like some help. I'm like, I don't I'm not here to charge you. And I, I haven't charged Cody a single dime. For any of my time that you know uh, and and actually being you know being at the fights etc so it's, this is all love and all like personal exploration for myself yeah. as well but you know i said look man my goal will be and i'll know that that we've been successful not when you hold you know the world championship title welterweight title above your head not when you're in the new you know seven figure house you know, none of those things. It's when you actually are able to clearly and honestly walk into that ring, Cody Crowley, 
who happens to be a masterful boxer right. and is a healer and an empath and is a son and, you know, is, you know, a, a person of, of culture and all these different variations. Right. So when you can show up in the truest form of self in a moment of, 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 you know, mortal combat, yeah. this is, then, then the martial artist is able to come through and come out when you're not overwhelmed with the chaos of the field, right? The yeah. energy that's in the field, the opponent, the television, the fans, the everything, right? So it's, this is the mental toughness and the mental game where, you know, in, in, in the discovery of self, it's not as much a technique as much as it is a place that, that someone has to arrive. Right. And that arrival destination is really owning and, and knowing the broken self and the, you know, yeah. contorted self and all these things that we think are broken and contorted, but really they just are who we are. And, and when we place them in the right place and we uh, are allowed to visit the hurt child, the, the yeah. traumatized child and able to honor that, you know, in the past and, and reclaim that horrific set of, events right. with a meaning not that we change the the facts right of right. the situation but it's changing the meaning of them and giving them new life so that as you go through the tree and the root system down to the origination point of all the things that are in you in this area then you're able to actually when you change the meaning of that it the energy shoots through the entire tree and changes everything right and so so these are some of the things that you know um you know, I've worked with Cody on to, to really understand and get at that. And, and I feel like in the last couple of fights, um, he'll, he'll admit this to you. He's like, man, I'm, I'm still overwhelmed with the chaos and the energy of everything, but you know, there's a difference. You can see yeah. it in him. Um, there's a difference that he's growing into. And it's like, man, I want you to become a ninja in there. Like I want you to be right. as, as everything is a thousand times higher. I want you to be a thousand degrees lower and yeah. counterbalance the entire field. Like that's in my opinion, a, a real ninja right, right. And, you know, there's a reason why ninjas them. are so there's there's such stealth it's not just because they're good at camouflaging themselves and they're and they're trained in in sneakiness you know what i'm saying they, yeah. they camouflage everything about themselves they're they, they make their whole you know aura kind of disappear but that's the kind of conscious control they can exert that's ninjutsu you know what i'm saying it's not just uh what you see on television but but yeah. I love what you're talking about, you know, but I'm, and I, I've had a, I had a remarkable podcast with Dr. Don Wood, who, who talks about this and he's a, he's, you know, he, he has people who will go to him and, and, and many of them are, you know, marathon runners or like one guy was the, um, he, he was competing with the same five guys for like five years. Uh, and, and Dr. Wood got a hold of him and he's like, you know, let's revisit some of the traumas you may not have thought that this might be the thing that's keeping you from these like these 3.2 seconds that separate you from these five competitors you know he's in like a small field i think they they are runners but they run with the blades you know um because they're amputees and so mm -hmm. there's only so many of these competitors right oh. um and he's in this kind of small field, which is which is great for a study because then you have some consistency to look at it's not going to be so so many variables right he started working with uh dr wood um and they they literally they they shaved seconds off i mean like th this is just this is from trauma work so you got to be start to ask yourself wait a minute how does me going to work you know uh do, doing the, the 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 real hard work you know and and going into some of the shadows um and shining a light on it how is that going to help me perform better and that is the fucking million dollar question right i mean this is what people don't understand yeah. and yeah. i think that's what you know that's where you're going with cody i think that's what kindled your friendship from what you're saying um but man people have you have no idea the what you unlock when you have the courage to go to those places and it, you know it's not always the easiest thing to do because sometimes there's a lot of pain there, but the rewards well, are immense. Yeah. yeah, I mean, so my my theory on it is that on the on, there is a a value of mental release, right? So there's that that I've I've made peace with 
and understand better myself and the events that happen and I've transmuted them into a meaning that serves me, right? Um, and there's another dynamic that isn't actually the body. And, and, and so um, I believe that, you know, the, that trauma is literally a, um, an energy store and takes a shaving off of your flow state. And in that flow state comes the, the, um, the absorption of energy and the ex expansion and expulsion of energy, right? The usage of your energy, right? Yeah. And so, and so if you, um, if one of the reasons why I think monks go on the mountain and those that are, are absolutely clear come down and have the ability to go into this unconscious competence into this, you know, flow state ninja, like, um, you know, uh, presence is because, um, you know, and is because of this, uh, the work that's been done to clear some of these things, to cut cords from, you know, the things that are binding your energy. And, and so in the body, you know, especially for a boxer or any athlete, obviously using their body yeah. um, to heat uh, the ability to um, muster energy, store mm -hmm. energy and expend that energy and, and then um, recalibrate with recuperation. Right. Yeah. This whole process is one of the things that we, um, that I was working with Cody on, which is, um, you know, I, I got him a, uh, introduced him to a Qigong master nice. and helped him realize what his energy, energy body was doing and how to actually pull in pranic energy that's not his nice. and expend that energy in a given moment that has nothing to do with his core life force energy. Right. And it's the ability to, you know, if you're, if you're blocked up with trauma and you're, you're, you're not actually, um, you know, in that moment with the clearest version of self, right. Even still the clearest version of self exists. And then we have these archetypes, right. right. Which are, can be masks or they can be literally just our, our, our sort of armament and, and, and our, our avatar in that form, right. In that ar archetypical form. But um, the point is, is that, you know, in seeing Cody get clearer and also, you know, work through some of these, uh, you know, self-sabotage processes that he goes through, um, you know, some of these imposter, you know, um, yeah. uh, you know, moments that he has, his, his punch power um, increased by, you know, by his own estimation by about 15 to 20%. And that wow. was a combination of a couple different things. Um, and something I'll, I'll share with you later uh, that I'll just drop right now is, you know, the energy punch, right? So yeah. the one inch, the one inch punch that, you know, that Bruce Lee mastered. Absolutely. Right. Was, is, is, you know, his ability to muster that pranic energy and expend it into a single point. Right. right? And being, and he has had to be in that moment, completely clear, completely flowing so that all that energy could be assumed in the body and, you know, put into that. That's right. That, that you know one inch um and so yeah so having having the uh and i i totally understand what you're saying like people don't understand the you know the physiology behind trauma and how that impacts performance and, right. and you know and the last little anecdote that i'll give you real quick and then i'll uh get, serve it back to you is is this is that you know, I believe that, um, you know, like Cody and, and Cody would be the first person to, you know, to share this and to, you know, give me, you know, uh, space to, to share this on his behalf. But the trauma that he had created a chip on his shoulder mm -hmm. and he created this, you know, like most, especially combat athletes, they, uh, you know, need an outlet. They yeah. found something where they could go ape shit, mm -hmm. you know, and literally not go to jail for it. Right. And it was yeah. an outlet. It was a way to manage their energy the, and the, the energy of, of pain and suffering and, and the yeah. energy of trauma and rage into yeah. a, a useful point. But here's the thing. What's interesting is that I met Cody at a point when his trauma was no longer served him enough mm -hmm. because trauma, although a very, very powerful energy source, it is literally a very limited energy source. Yeah. And you know, and I know what the most abundant energy source there is in the metaphysical it's, it's love, it's love, right? Yeah. It's, it's love. And, and so, you know, and having this chip on his shoulder, which was driving him knowing that it's part of what he, you know, used to get up, um, you know, unconsciously in the morning to go right. do it, do it and to go beat people that he had to go beat. 
the fact is that, it, you know, he's becoming more of a complete holistic person. And, and now was the time to review what is your why? Right. Why are you in the ring? Why are you doing this every day to your body? Why are you going, right? you know, 50% farther in your training than anybody ever does and anybody you're ever face? He always believes that I'll out, if I outwork you while I'm training, I'm going to win. Right. Right. So well, his why was completely screwed up and he didn't have it like locked right. into it. Wasn't sustainable. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So to to replace that ugly, you know, that ugly little thing that sits in the backdrop of, of your psychology and to visit it in a way that you know exposes yeah. it and you're like, holy shit. And if I pull this out of the machine, yeah, what's gonna happen? Heat. what's going to fucking happen to me right exactly. like yeah. it's 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 like literally standing on the edge of your own abyss which we all do every day and going it's, it's a scary place dude especially when do? you've had so much success you know what i'm saying it right. makes it even scarier right. don't fuck with the system right don't mess with the machine you know and it takes and a brave heart have, yeah that's why i have so much respect for him because he was not only willing to uh, put that on the line but you know be brave yeah. in his own exploration of self he knew it wasn't going to work it, he knew it wasn't gonna last he was yeah. self-sabotaging doing all these things and you know it just wasn't serving his you know his being right right um god, god you know bless him because uh it's it takes a lot of courage to do that not many people you know who have come to the level of success that he has uh would be brave enough you know to and i mean it's pure courage that that says I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to take this risk. I'm going to, I'm going to exude my comfort zone and fucking, and, and see what happens because my intuition is telling me that whatever's on the other side of this thing is going to be better and, uh, and greater than what I got going on, you know? And that's a, that's a leap of faith that a lot of people don't take, unfortunately. Um, so right. that's, that's amazing. And yeah, it's, it's gonna, I mean, personal bravery yeah. in your own journey. I mean, it's easy to be brave externally, a yeah. lot easier in many cases to be braver, you know, uh, externally with the things that are, you know, oh, yeah. you jump across this bridge or jump across this chasm. Okay. But, you know, can you jump across your own chasm, you know, you know, where your mom told you every day that you were worth. Oh, dude, listen, I mean, I'll yeah. tell you uh, one of the easiest things that come to mind, I, you know, for 20 years, I was an actor. I, I, I would love getting a role that was like, so out. It was just, people would read it and be like that doesn't scare you and i'm like no not at all you know why because it was nothing like me it, you know what i'm saying like i can that that's it was it was always easy for me to do those roles because i could absolutely separate it from myself and and throw myself into it with with no concern that anyone is going to recognize the dark parts of me in this right but the roles that i got that were that used to be you know, a little too much like me, I would fucking have trouble with those roles, you know? And at the time I never knew why. Um, but, but, you know, that's, the, that's, that's the, the true courage comes from having the ability to, to, to look within honestly, to shine a light in those parts in real time, you know, and see what's happening. Cause uh, yeah. And that's where the uh, the greatest evolution lies as well. So imagine being in the ring with somebody who literally wants to kill you and like take your head off, and yeah. you know, and you, you know, your every instinct is to be on the most radical, hyper alert, you know, form. Oh yeah, dude. And 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 you know this because you were just you were just training and sparring. To literally, that's fight. exactly what I'm. What I what I do it to master. To overcome, yeah. you know, like why why I love the sport, why I love competing is because it puts right. me right up against that, and I and I have to fucking deal with it. I have to overcome and master my body, yeah. you know, and settle master my body back fear. down. Exactly. And it. that and so so the the bravery that it takes to recognize, you know, the dark side of the yin and yang, right? The dark side and the light side work together. It's the motor, right? So, you know. Um, when you expose more and you own more of the darker side, which is not evil, it's just, you know, the side of you that you um, wish that I wish um, I could, you know, go back in time and maybe improve or change, or that's my path of transformation, right? right? I'm looking to see how I can create more acceptance of my imperfections. Right. 
and, you have and to. where the value of those imperfections lie and how that propels my perfections, which I'm happy with and I'm, I'm proud and honored to, to have you know, accomplished. And it creates this swirling, you know, motor, this metaphysical energetic motor, right? So, you know, for, for Cody to, um, to go back and, and, and understand part of his debilitating motivation that has propelled him to such great success. That's karma right now, there, baby. Being in, counterproductive, in right? Yeah. And also it's now eating him alive and it's what's actually causing him to fail more out of the ring, which is making it harder to get back into the ring right. and actually do the, the genius work that he knows he can do. So, you know, it's this, everything is, is, is linked and it's, um, and it is part and parcel to itself because, you know, it's consciousness. And right. what we're really talking about is, you know, athletic genius and how that athletic genius um, persists in competition and overcomes in competition. Right. And, right. and having, having this absolute certainty of self, you know, this absolute certainty that, I actually know my dark side and right. I love, I love both sides and I'm, I'm, I'm complete and I'm not broken. Right. You know, right. people always say I've got, I've got so much to fix. I'm so fucked up. And I'm like, it's, it's a matter <laughs> of knowing yeah. that you're not broken. Right. It, it's your art. You are perfect in this moment to see yourself. Right. It's, it's not, you're just you not know, in the habit of thinking like that. You know, that's no, the biggest it's thing impossible that, really to see the forest through the trees. You right. often take someone to say, Hey, look, let me guide you through this, or at least let me show you what I see. Right. You know, let me, let me give you a different viewpoint. Yeah. Right. And that's, and that's, you know, that's been the beauty of my relationship with, with Cody through all this. And um, what's interesting is I always tell him, I go, look, man, um, about half of this, I know from my, my history and about, yeah. The other half of it is coming to me in, you know, I'm, I'm receiving for you and for right. myself, because as I share this with you, the message is as much for me as it is for you. Yeah. And I'm learning as we go together. Right. So, you know, our relationship is, is uh, while I am, you know, I provide, you know, his, the coaching that he's, you know, searching for and needs, you know, we're on this journey together and we're discovering things together that, that are um, both interesting and compelling. And then I have to reflect on, you know, the, the, maybe something really profound that he took in that I said, and I'm like, Oh shit, I got to apply that to myself yeah. now. And oh, you yeah, know, when yeah. I'm about myself, I replay the met, the conversation. I'm like, wow, that was so for me, you know, um, Th this keeps yeah. coming up man, and, and it's, it's incredible to me when something just keeps repeating, the pattern keeps showing up in my life and, 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 and it's either, and this has been said and said, and, and I'm, I'm kind of still sitting back with my, my jaw slack, you know, um, at, at the amount of times it's come up, but um, the, the, the way that humanity has taken its trauma, you know, and, and is completely oblivious to the fact that if, if you do not integrate and, and work through and heal and eventually accept those traumas for the for whatever value they had to you in your in your karmic you know journey then you they will continue to show they will continue to repeat in one way or another and so when you have you know i i, I just keep looking at the, the the patterns you know in our society mm -hmm. and and it's mind blowing to me how much people are not habituated or educated in in the way that we create our reality and so they are they are subject to the whims and the chaotic randomness of their trauma of their personal traumas and as and our collective societal traumas and those can be some ugly fucking dangerous combination of things you know and then of course people are like this this sucks why <laughs> who signed me up for this you know, this is like the worst idea ever. You know, I'm just constantly right. being victimized and bombarded with the most heinous shit. Where does it come from? And, and I'm, I just keep thinking about, yeah, it's, it's performance, but it's also life. You know what I'm saying? Like, and the more we can put out into, into the, the consciousness of this planet, the, the, these ideas, um, and, and the more people can become aware that we are, we are creating from this moment or not. And if we are not aware that we're bringing in all this shit 
we're going to, it's going to keep showing up in our future. And so we have to really get fucking honest with ourselves about our past, about our present and about where we want to go so that we can, we can create the future that we want and stop bringing this, these failed patterns and traumas into our future. And I, I just, I, I feel like I've been having to say that um, yeah. for a long time. Well, you know, the thing is that like with, with Cody and, and what I was, you know, when we would drop in on, on some of his challenges and what he was going through, I, I would be like, you realize that boxing is just a device. It's, it's the device you chose when you came here because you needed the ultimate fighting combat warrior device archetype in order for you to actually see yourself because you are that, you know, next level kind of guy. And yeah. it's not that he's, you know, he rose, he's risen to this level. It's more about the device of boxing and the device of and the mechanics of boxing that you are working towards a goal. And that goal is a date. And that date between now and then, when you get that contract, you do everything in your power and to, to, to manifest a body and a mentality that's ready to be a warrior and win. And along that path, if you're a professional and people are, have, have, you know, are, you, you have hired professionals that work with you, your trainer, your nutritionist, your all the things, then you become, you know, you start to see that, um, that it is a device that has many mirrors for you to see self in. Right. And, and as you traverse, I was going back to this is that, um, over that course of say three to six months of prepping for a fight, you are being told what to do, when to do it, how to do it. And yeah. over and over, it's mostly you telling yourself, but everybody, including yourself is forcing you into this tiny little box right. to work till you're about dead. Right. right. So the point is, is that once the fight's over, all of a sudden the boxer, the fighter goes. Yeah. Nobody's telling me what to do right now. What can right. I go do? How right. much fun can I go have? And I couldn't eat this. I'll eat a little of that, but I won't eat this. But that, and all of a sudden, this pattern, and it happens for for, for oh, yeah, totally. event based like combat warriors. Um, but most, but but a lot of you know athletes who are obviously event driven, and <laughs> they reach that point where they're like, I'm, I can take a break. And so you know, the game within the game is, what do you do when the, the last bell rings and right. you won? And you're like, do I need to go out and celebrate and like just completely, you know, gorge myself? Um, you know, a really wise man, um, you know, said, uh, I think it was actually Max Verstappen's dad. He's a Formula One driver and his dad was a driver. And he said, son, never celebrate your highs too much and never wallow in your, in your yeah. sorrow losses for too long. Just turn the page. Right. Right. And, and, and that, you know, for a lot of, you know, for people who, you know, who are fighters and, you know, they come up out of nothing often. And, you know, all of a sudden they've got all kinds of everything, attention, yeah. money, power, this, that, and the other. And, and it's like, it's, it's self-destructive. I mean, look at Mike Tyson. He went through that, right? Yeah. His story so is beautiful. People. Yeah. Right. So, you know, the devastation and destruction that he left behind is now a bountiful fruit basket that he shares with, you know, Joe Rogan and millions of people. And, and he's, and he, and, and people, lo and people love him. People yeah. hated him. I mean, oh, they yeah. loved him, then they hated yeah. him, uh, and now they love him again. And, and, yeah. and it's not because of anything except his own self-realization and self-love, which he never Rejecting had before. World you know? now. Not, not always having to still be, hey, champ, the champ. Like, he, he left that archetype a long time ago when he went to yeah. jail. Like that stripped him like that, like boxing as a device as, as jail was a device for him. Yeah. Right. All of these things are, are, are reflections in the holographic universe that we're in to see selves, to see our consciousness right. zoot itself into a space, into a person. And that's why we see them out in the physical, right? Ooh. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, and it's, and it's, you know, a profound thing to see, you know, people go through, um, you know, I also, I also just wanted to take a minute, um, you know, to talk a little bit about a conversation I had, um, with, uh, with Cody's trainer and, um, and he was like, you know, Lynn, I really respect you. I think you, um, I think you're really a lovely person. You, you know what you're talking about. Stay the fuck away from my fight. <laughs> What's that? He goes, but really, I don't know what you do with Cody and uh, I don't know how you do it or what it is, but I know that, you know, he really vibes with you and yeah. you have a common presence with him. And, you know, he wasn't trying to overcolor it or, you know, try to, you know, 
to, you know, right. uh, shine my shoes. But he was like, you know, um, you know, wh- what is it that you, that you, you think yeah, you what's your secret to- man? Do? And I, I, I sat back and I was like, you know, I'm the goat. And he yeah. was like, what? wait, 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 you're the greatest of all time of what? <laughs> this is yeah. what I'm asking. I'm like, no, 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 I'm not the goat. I'm the goat. I'm literally the goat that you put in the trailer with the thoroughbred racehorse who keeps the horse really, really calm before the race. Right. While they're traveling, while they're, you know, stressed all the things from getting from one pasture to the next to the racetrack, you know, right. back, you know, and, and he, he, he chuckled and he had a big laugh. And, um, and, you know, I, I was, uh, I was at, uh, in Dallas, uh, for Cody's last fight, mm-hmm. um, uh, against Josita Lopez and it was tremendous. Um, and, you know, I, I really wasn't expecting this. I, it was the first time I got a chance to meet Cody's parents mm-hmm. and, um, and I was, you know, I'm usually pretty mindful and like pretty sensitive to energies and maybe things are going to happen yeah. or not, but I said, hello. And, you know, immediately we went into this, uh, this deep, like questioning and, and almost like interrogation. I, I, and I, I took oh, it, it was yeah. like parents meeting the new guy. Right. right. And so I, I finally realized I was like, Oh, I get it now. Like I'm the new guy and, you know, Cody's about to, you know, really blow right. up. I'm, sh- I'm just showing up out of the woodworks and who is this dude and what's he doing with our son? Course, and, yeah. You know, all these things came out and, um, and it was beautiful to watch, um, you know, because I, as I, I, I got, in a moment, I got my back up to be defensive, and I was like, "Wait yeah. a second, let me see this for for these are his parents. Right. I am the outsider. You know, they don't know what I do. And no, no they don't know where you came out. from. They just know that, you know, they don't yeah, even know so, that you're not getting paid. You know, they probably just assume. You know, they didn't know that. Yeah, That's they, what I'm they saying. thought I had like all kinds of weird deals with with Cody. And I've got of course, and uh, and so what was beautiful is, is I saw how, uh, how much love, you know, his parents had for him and have for him. And, and in that moment, you know, I, I realized my own, you know, you know, I had to take a back seat to that. Right. And, um, and it was, it was cool because after, you know, spending some time and, and, you know, talking with them, I saw, you know, how vested they you know were. And a lot of parents aren't like, they've been vested with Cody for, right. you know, since the beginning, like, um, doing all kinds of things for, to help his career. And uh, a lot of athletes don't have that. And, um, and so it was, you know, it took some time, but I, I won, I won Jim nice. rally over and, um, and uh, you know, I had uh, a chance to meet him for that one time. And, and, and uh, the unfortunate news is that we recently yeah. uh, just lost Jim. And I just wanted to say to Cody and uh, Cody's family, how much uh, I love you guys. And, uh, you know, Jim will be definitely missed. I was looking forward to having a, a, a relationship with him because uh, we did reach a point where he kind of put his hand on my shoulder. Yeah. He's like, you're an all right guy. Yeah. I was like, okay, yeah. Cool. Condolences, <laughs> awesome. Cody. I just want to be seen, man. I'm, 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 I'm here to help. I'm here to, you know, come in peace and I'm here to make it fun. But um yeah, you. so I just wanted to say uh, that was a big shout out to, to everyone. Yeah, shout out to Cody and condolences, brother, to uh, to you and the family. Um, he's probably back in Australia right now, I think, right? Um, yeah. Uh, anyway, um, so, dude, I, you know, I, these are some of my favorite, absolute favorite topics, you know. Uh, but I wanted, I also wanted you to talk a little bit about, um, you know, in harmony because. I, I was just telling you before we got on before we yeah. got on the record here, you know, I I'm I'm I met this uh, this awesome woman. Um, we were we were both volunteering uh, at Dr. Stephen Greer's uh, Weekend Under the Stars a few months ago, which he had uh, on a on an Indian sacred Indian land uh, in outside of Phoenix. And we just, it was, it was, it was just a tremendous experience. Um, and, and we were, and we hit it off and we saw, we saw some incredible, um, you know, using the CE5, the close encounters of the fifth kind, his meditation protocols. We were, yeah. I mean, we saw dozens and dozens of ships and we, and we saw these incredible blue lights that were, I mean, it was like this ship just dematerialized literally like a hundred feet from us. And my friend saw it and she was like, look that way because everyone was kind of looking this way and she was like no no look that way i was like what i'll be the only one looking this way and sure enough these these beautiful blue lights were this kind of like came online um and awesome. and so her, her and i uh we, we we became friends and we stayed in touch and she's like and i had no idea that 
she had, cause I know she'd been checking out my podcast a little bit, you know? Um, but I, I didn't realize that a, she didn't, she had never checked out my podcast with Dr. Porter, either of them. And, and that she didn't have any idea that I had you on either. Cause when I first got her message, she was like, you know, she told me that she, she got the, um, the in harmony meditation chair. Mm -hmm. Um, and she, and I was like, oh, that's awesome. And then she was like, I'm getting, and I'm also just getting my brain tap. And I was like, I use mine like almost every day, I would say. And I just assumed that she was telling me because she, you know, she saw my podcast, you know, and she knew I had associations or whatever. And, uh, and then I was like, wait a minute, <laughs> I didn't even have you on to talk about this yet. I didn't think I was like. There's no fucking way. I, I was like, what the fuck? So uh, I was like, did, did you see my podcast with Dr. Porter? She's like, who? I'm like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. It was like a fucking, this was literally two days ago. It was a total synchronicity. And I was like, tell me about how, because so she got her brain tap headset today and she used it on her, on her favorite chair, her, her, what's the, what's the official name of the chair yeah. is it yeah it's the cocoon experience and it's when you um combine any one of in harmony's vibroacoustic platforms which is the meditation cushion the practitioner or the sound lounge with a brain tap headset which creates brain entrainment and those things uh, essentially create synchronized vibration light and music um to you know essentially biohack your consciousness and put you in a brainwave state like a yogi master so yeah so, so yeah, moment. that's great so and then she so today she, she she swears by by the in harmony by the meditation chair she's 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 always talking about it and it and today she tried it with the headset and she was like oh my god oh my god um and and i was like tell me tell me i was like and she said uh she was like um she she said, and I quote: um, "You can you can your blood you can literally feel like the cellular change in your in your whole body." She said. Um, she said, "I don't know if that ma makes any sense or not, but it's 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 an immersive ex like she, it's dropping in is such a joy. Whereas we you know you know anybody who has tried meditation or." you know, at any point can tell you that, you know, dr dropping in sometimes can be challenging, you know, especially if you're just starting out. Um, and the awesome thing about um, the, you know, the chair and brain tap is it starts to do a lot of the, of the leg work for you so that you don't have to spend 40 years in a cave in Tibet to okay. start to, for your brainwave to start to emulate and, and, you know, very much mirror what some of those monks' brain waves uh, look like all the time now. That's right. the admit that is technology at its finest, ladies and gentlemen. And and so, you know, the fact that she's she's speaking about this, I mean, it's so synchronistic. And I swear, you just can't make this shit up. It's it's uh, it's incredible. So um, I, I had to. I was like, oh man, I can't wait to tell Lynn about this. It's such a yeah. Cool I'm always I always get super lit when people have. I mean, that's why I do this. You know, that's why we do this is because yeah. when people have um, profound experiences um, with the projection of their own consciousness in a state that they're never they've never been in or could hold for any length of time. So you know, everything you were just saying. You know, what we do is, and this combination, uh, this text that creates um, a constant steady state brainwave that is similar to a yogi master when he when he or she is is in you know in a deep meditation and it's a biohack right so you know the thing for me is like this empty this notion of the empty awareness bliss state is you know the western philosophy of the end nirvana of, of meditation right. and for the eastern philosophy it's it's the very first building block that right. actually gives you a, a doorway to open and and you know do the work and and go where you want to go. And, right. and really what it is, you know, meditation is a key. The key goes to the door and you are the door and that door, you open that door, but all of a sudden you're like, wow, the door's open. This is amazing. And all of a sudden it closes because you started having thoughts. Right. Right. And you're like, how do I keep that open? How do I spin the plates without not spinning the plates? How right. Do I, how am I, how can I be aware with not being aware? Right. It's this empty vessel strange you know um confucianism right that that we it's really difficult right so so what this technology assisted meditation does uh which is 
which is a lane that in harmony created so tam technology assisted meditation uh helps you uh alleviate the distracted mind and when you add uh, a piece of technology like brain uh, tap mm -hmm. you are literally inviting frequencies that are resonatory to your body into the body both in your visual cortex your audible cortex and your skin which is you know you know feeling energy right, right. And, and the frequencies are all resonatory. So what ends up happening is it's the exact opposite of a, a deprivation tank. Right. When you go to a depth tank, you are taking all the senses out of the equation in order for the conscious to go, oh, I don't have a body. I can go do it. Right, body. right. Great, let me go. And you go, but it's the last five minutes of a 50 minute session or an right. hour long session that your body and everything is so relaxed that you go there. Uh, our technology drops you in within, you know, two to five minutes to that space. No matter if you've been meditating like a master yeah. for 20 years or you can't spell meditation, right. you're going to have the same experience in terms of that space being opened up and held for you. Right. And so when that door is held open for you, you're able to actually walk through and go, Oh, what? this is what it feels like, right. right? And so now your mind and your consciousness now have a reference point, almost like muscle memory, right? So that's right. If you, if you get there or see it and can believe that it's just right there, then then you can get there. And that's where that. So this goes back to that three seconds that guy was shaving off, right? The pair of right. uh, the guy with uh, that runs on blades, right? It that it's that mental that mental element that says you can, and you've been there, almost been there, feel it. And mm -hmm. to get there is a combination of physiology, your story and your mental game. That's right. So, you know, so that in and of itself opens up a whole nother, you know, another, you know, realm of, of performance opportunities. Right. Yeah. And, and it's, and, and while, while you're, it's like, while you're down there, <laughs> you know, that, <laughs> yeah. that, that old uh, funny cliche, you know, while you're down there, you, you really, it, you have the option to do a lot of things that you don't normally have the option to do. You know, if, if you're, it's like, if I get a brand new computer and I open it up and I turn it on and it doesn't have any programs on it, I can admire its beauty all day, but I'm not gonna be able to do shit on that computer. All right. right. If I get a computer and it's got a bunch of programs that are bugged out and, and not written well, and then I'm going to be in for, uh, you know, in my my brand new beautiful computer, it's not going to be a lot of fun while I try to actually function in in the world with it and accomplish things. It's going to exactly. be challenging, right? Exactly. So, uh, most of us, I would say, it's it, I think it's safe to say, most of us don't make it out of childhood unscathed. <laughs> and even if we do, a lot of times we've come with so much shit from past lives and past existences here and everywhere. You know that that it's you're still not having a there's still some debugging to do, right? So when you, while you're down there, while you have these doors open, you have access to all the code, right? You can, you can rewrite your story. If there are things showing up in your life that you're sick of showing up and you can start to reprogram your, yourself and those things are going to stop showing up. You know, you have to figure out what that is, but that is the yeah, opportunity that, that we're talking the awareness about. Awareness has to be exactly the, your awareness has to be sparked, right? Consciousness is another way of saying awareness. I am aware yeah. that sun, you know, shines bright, and I'm, you know, I need that sun, so my That's consciousness right. expands. So, you know, what I like to say is that we are basically spiritual radios, right? And you know the the notion of of meditation is to dial yourself into a frequency that has the least amount of static right. and has the most direct connection to source, to the universe, right? Yeah. And so, you know, the the way in which we get to this, you know, like just like a, a radio, literally you're fuzzy and then you push, you get to it, you're on it, and then it goes away because it gets fuzzy again, right? So meditation is supposed to be that 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 perfect brainwave state. That's another way to, you know, the radio station is, are you tuned to data, felt, theta, alpha, or gamma, right? Right. And, and, and as long as you're alive, direct, you're, get, you're right. getting a signal one way or the other. Right. The question is how direct, clean is the signal, right? right? And so see what's what people, I, I, I try to share with people all the time. I'm like, you would like to manifest more in your life, right? You would like to heal yourself more. You'd yeah. like to send more love out. You'd like to do all these things, right? Well, 
unless your radio station is dialed in perfectly, then you have a fuzzier connection. And the fuzzier that connection, right? I mean, it's no wonder that you're not communicating with higher self it, and actually having clear intentions that it. go into the universe that aren't staticky intentions, right? And now, yeah, now you can do the work because the door is held open. And Cody is actually just kind of go back a little bit. Uh, Cody uses the meditation cushion in the ring. Like, have you thought about taking your meditation cushion to the, um, to the, you know, to the bat, you know, your sparring ring. No, so that's, that's, with, that's awesome. Every time he, that bell rings, he comes back, sits down for, um, you know, five to eight seconds. That's awesome. That's a drops fucking in. great idea. Yeah. yeah. Drops in and he literally, um, resets himself from breath to pranic instead of the to, stool, dude, that is brilliant to mental. Right. And right? then, then he's, and then he comes out and he's ready to listen to what his coach has to yeah. say. And then he gets up and goes back. in. Oh, I love that dude. Yeah. I was just yeah, getting a so, stool so, for people all, all, all afternoon. <laughs> yeah. So we've integrated, you know, this notion of technology assisted meditation into, um, you know, life force energy coaching. And it has a definitive place because when, you know, it's easy to slip off that kind of Zen, you know, frequency yeah. and into, you know, fight, flight or freeze mode. And that becomes all of a sudden, now you're not in an unconscious competence right. mode. You're in, I'm wholly totally conscious and I'm totally doing things, only things I know how to do. Right. Right. Real genius on the court, real genius on, on the, in the field, in the field of life, real genius between two people in, on a street is when, you know, you have this, um, you know, clarity and you don't have any of your masks up and you're able to, to traverse that moment in flow state with your, with your true self, yeah. right. And, and nothing else. And so, you know, to manufacture a flow state for an athlete, it's not as difficult as you might think. This notion of the elusive flow state is, is it's not that elusive. No, it's you know, Paul. It's becoming more and more clear to people. I think you know that actually. And I'm wondering if the I'm just thinking of the Navy SEALs and how they spent so much money trying to figure out a way to entrain flow states into their into their into their seals but they, they, they found a, a lot of obviously a lot of difficulty um getting getting because you can take a seal so far right you know I mean, you, have you ever read uh, i'm sure you have um what's it called something fire um it's it's about flow states um the guys who wrote it are like huge burners um mm -hmm. stealing fire maybe no, Fuck, what's it called Oh, I'll, see, I'll, I'll get you this out. You'll love it. You will love it. It's so good. Um, it's written by a, like a bunch of a burner, like scientist geeks who are obsessed with flow states and athletes. Dude, you would fucking love this book. I read it years ago. Um, nice. But they talk about how the SEALs, you know, they'll spend millions. They'll, they'll take a, they'll spend a whole year getting a SEAL. And, and at the very end, if he can't, if he can't get into a flow state with his team, with, with his unit, they got to cut him. And they, they can't take a chance on this because that one person who cannot entrain, who cannot enter into that state of, you know, and they know because they measure the brain wave. They can see when someone's in a flow state, it's fucking lit up like a Christmas tree. They know the amount of data that's being taken in by this brain is, I mean, you're talking about night and day to someone who's not right. And, and they have a hard, fast rule, apparently, you know, and this comes from one of the, one of the pe greatest people to ever be in charge of the seals, but he made it a fucking rule. And he was like, if you, if you want them to remain the elite team, then this, that you have to, this has to be part of what we do going forward. So they, yeah, they'll well, cut, I, cut I, a seal. Yeah. They'll cut them. They'll say, sorry. You know, I mean, you can't, we can't send you out on missions. You know, you did all the physical work, but you don't have the, yeah, the, exactly. what, uh, piece. Well, yeah. you know, I would I would contend that it's no dis not dissimilar to you know being a boxer um, and showing up in the boxer archetype, but actually never honoring the actual person behind all these archetypes. Right, as a seal, you're as intensely you know um, committed to that archetype and to the notion of all of the things that they want you to do and commit to that you, you lose a bit of self, you lose self, right? Yeah. And you, you, you reform self into the, that archetype to the max because you have to, it's, it's team life or death. It's, you know, national security. It's, you know, we're at war. You're the tip of the right. or whatever it is. But the point is, is that, um, is to, is for, 
even for those people, the, the training I would do with them is, is non archetypical. Right. Well, and I would go with, you know, what is holding back your unconscious, unconscious competence and the muse that wants to play in a war space, right? Like literally your muse, uh, you know, warrior's muse is to go to war, right? And yeah. To play in that space. And the martial artists will come out to serve, protect and kill and reach objectives beyond your own, you know, right capable consciousness like that's the whole point that's why we love people like michael jordan who are like he is unconscious right now yeah he just you know scored like that it's point. funny we, we isn't it funny we use that term to describe someone who is in a in such a state that they they're just literally like like it's like magic you know what they're doing yeah. is 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 it's, it's like it, it's like you're watching them live out their life in their fantasy and their wildest dreams you know they just can't miss it's like they're they're lit and and and, and that's what's happening it's the right. coolest fucking thing and we and we're like he's unconscious you know it's right. and in a way he is because he's he is. not operating totally. from the consciousness anymore no, totally. his exactly. brain is lit up if you could right. see what his and brain we, looked and like we you get know to witness these beautiful like yeah. creative um expressions of the game whatever the game is it's so cool in there in and in, in the light like it's like source love light energy shining through their stained glass yeah into you know ten thousand plus hours of mastery and onto the court or the ring or wherever it is and, and you, you can feel it dude it's palpable right yeah. i mean you see fighters the moment they enter that state everything about them changes i mean and, and it just the energy completely shifts whatever was happening and then all of a sudden it's literally they become like neo in the matrix you know oftentimes of fighters they all of a sudden the, the, everything that's being thrown at them seems to be in slow motion even though you know two rounds ago they were they were getting beat up on like now they're just they're getting out of the way and they're enjoying themselves while they do it you know and you're just watching this it's amazing how much up here, you know, and our perception and what's happening controls what's happening in our environment. And yeah, it's a, that's what people get get mistaken. You brought this up earlier, and I wanted to speak to it. Is you know, when people say we're manifest, we manifest our own, you know, our world, right? You know, and and uh, and that can be misconstrued to a lot of different ways. And you know, certainly there's you know a very root base uh, of that is that you know manifesting your world is literally how you wake up and how your nervous system mm -hmm. processes every single moment from you opening your eyes to, yeah. you know, breakfast, the guy, the cab, the work, all these things. And, and the thing is, is that when you do take time to meditate and put some distance between you and the world, mm -hmm. you do have a calmer center that allows you to put, you know, the egoic structure and archetypes aside for a second because you don't need the boxer archetype right. when you're in, the, in the line for to get bagels right <laughs> what, you need, what you need is the ability to show up cleanly you this the, the that's honor right and just so be, be present yeah, and then allow ego to bring in these archetypes as needed and as much but not to live through them they're not they were never designed to live completely no. through they're designed to serve and to give diamondism to our personalities and right you add different mirrors in our movie that allows us to see our consciousness on display. Right. And, you know, in this moment, like we've always talked about, like you're my mirror in this moment, right? And we're right. reflecting beauty between each other and sharing and, and, and to learn from you is, and for you to learn from me is, 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 is the beauty of it. Right. So, absolutely. you know, all these things are just devices uh, and, you know, whether you're, you're, and that's uh, why we're here too. That's the, <laughs> that's the amazing thing is that, you know, that, in my opinion and understanding and experience, you know, that we, it's, I, I, you know, I had a weekend with Bruce Lipton uh, two weekends ago and he was just on fire. And I learned, I've heard him many times and I met him a few times, but, but man, he was, he was just, he said some profound and am amazing things this last week. And that I just keep turning over in my head. And, and one of the things he said was um, first he said that, you know, that we're, we're all like earth rovers. He's like, you know, there's a Mars Rover. It's getting a signal from earth and it's out there and it's exploring and it's going here and it's examining and touching things and sending signals back to its source. You know, he was like, when, 
when you are here living in this life, what do you, you know, you're, you're getting a signal. <laughs> He's like, when, when, when you quote die, what happens to the signal? He was like, if you have a TV and, and it stops working, what is the signal still there? Of course, the signal's still there. Get a new TV and plug it in. You're going to get a, you're going to get a, a, a great picture. He was like, yeah. it's the same thing with people. We're, we're earth yeah. rovers, you know? We, we, we're all getting a signal and we're he talked about avatars in a biomedic, in a, in a exactly, you know, and this is soft technology and it's, it's some of the most amazing stuff there is. I, you know, I think certainly the most amazing thing on this planet, I don't care what is going on in any laboratory, this stuff yeah. right here, the human body and what it does. If you don't think this is the most amazing technology on the planet, then you don't know what's going on every second of every day in all 50 trillion of the cells in your body, which make you up, you know, it's just, it's incredible. And the other thing he said, which I can't, I cannot pass an opportunity to share. He said, uh, he said, uh, fuck now it's going to, now, of course it's like, I'm out of here. I'll see you. Um, I, <laughs> I had it on the tip of my tongue for like 25 minutes. It'll come to me. Um, oh, I know what he, he said. Manifesting. He said, the, the 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 true secret is if if something has not shown up in your life if something keeps continuing to show up in your life that you don't want it is only because you do not have the program to support the reality that you want as of now and the great news is that can change it doesn't matter what it is you know like the tools to make the changes, to change the code, to put the right code in there, to get and see and experience what you want. It's all out there. And if you start looking for it, it's going to start looking for you. And, and, I, and I love the way he phrased that because it's so true. You know, We think we want so many things, but a lot of us don't have the right code to support that belief, to support that idea. Because the truth is, and, and I think you know this too, Lynn, if we did, it would have fucking hit us in the face already. We would have, it would have found a way to us, most of us already, right? The, th the things that are in our code have a way of hitting us in the face, for lack of a better term, Wait, whether usually, we're ready or not. Very subtle. The universe is usually very subtle yeah. in its nature until it's not. You know, the, 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 the tides recede slowly until yeah. there's, they've receded so much that they are actually a tsunami that right. comes back at you. You know, that's the like, paradox. Where's the water going? <laughs> It's no, so no, nice. It's just like three miles out. Honey, not they, out. Exactly. Yeah. That's it right there. It's perfect, dude. That's a perfect metaphor. i never forget. I, kept, I was on St. Lawrence River. I, we almost died the following day. I think it was Hurricane. It was either Ike or fucking Sandy. And we were oblivious because we were on the island and we weren't listening to the radio. We didn't even know the hurricane was coming in. And the, the, I never saw the St. Lawrence River so calm. It was, I was like, oh my God. Like I took a picture. I had it blown up. I didn't realize I was going to almost die the following day, but, but I right. my dude, I never saw anything like it. And I never thought, Hmm, <laughs> why is it so unnaturally flat? Why is like, right. what's happening? My right. God, man, that, that's it right there though. <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Um, that's crazy. So, Hey, look, we're, we're getting close to the end and I want yeah, to, I, I got some UF stuff, UFO stuff. To oh, hit me, bro. Hit me. Ask you and talk about, I mean, so, um, yeah, so I just recently saw a YouTube that said the government is now reporting uh, or admits to 400 plus UFO sightings 400, and huh? like 11 encounters, like actual encounters, right? And I'm, and I know that I, I saw uh, you know video of yours that was uh, talked about you know the uh, the Tic Tacs and and uh, yeah. you know, these objects that appear to be more militaristic. Um, or, or maybe man-made, right. I'm, I'm curious, like, I know that, you know, extraterrestrial star brothers and sisters are out there wanting to make contact. You experienced it just yeah. recently in V5 um, and continue to experience that. Um, I feel like it's a mixed narrative between, like, the military is like, hey, we should ride the UFO thing because now we have a space force. Yeah. Thank you, Donald Trump. Uh, yeah. Now we have a space force and we need to just ride this thing and keep it all mixed up between like, you know, these are extraterrestrials and, and it's more. But we don't know what they are. So yeah, we, we don't, don't know what. <laughs> they, yeah. Yeah. So, I, so uh, what, 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 what exactly is your, is your, is your question? 
my question is like, you know, out of this, you know, 400 UFO sightings or that they admit to an 11, 11, you know, actual contact with, yeah, you know, uh, these encounters, like, I mean, I mean, what do you think really is going on oh, in their so, closure process? And like, it's, so, got, it's got a bunch of tentacles that have different opposing, like, I think objectives, but it's all, you know, using this one mystery. You know, I, what, what's going on right now uh, is, 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 at least right now, a dog, a pure dog and pony show. I mean, these the congressional hearings in Congress, they're truly an insult to the American people. They're an insult to anybody who's been paying any attention over the last 25, 30 years, even, even if you just want to go that far, you know, to say that there's been, I mean, we know for a fact we, there, we have, tens of thousands of documents declassified to prove it that the the cia all the intelligence communities that let alone the unignored like the the, the aerospace industry and uh, you know right Ray, Ray, raytheon boeing los alamos these all these guys have been we know from documents that they've been working with clandestine operators of the, of the united states government for 60 years that they've had this technology they've had downcraft since roswell the original headline that read after roswell was absolutely true and what came afterwards was propaganda but unfortunately we know from you know life that people are easily propagandized into believing and thinking a certain way um and, and so 400 is a bunk number dr greer is currently working with a few senators um and he's been spending a lot of time in washington with them he's trying to get out in front of and at least educate some people very much on the dl um as to how long this has been going on he said that he finally was because you know he's briefed every sitting president since clinton um on on the actual ufo situation and actually clinton was one of the few who expressed interest um in, in trying to get the information to the public. And then they had a last minute meeting, um, the head of the CIA did with Dr. Greer and he, they said, we're not gonna do that. And they, they were actually out to, at dinner at his house and in front of his kids, they were like, we couldn't keep the president safe. And he was like, are you fucking? He's like, his daughters were at the dinner table. He was like, are you serious? You know, and he's like, yeah, that's how powerful these, these parties are. And, and Dr. Greer was like, this is a joke, right? He's the president of the United States. And you're saying you can't, you can't keep him safe if he was to do something like this. I mean, we did lose JFK. That's ex moment. exactly. I mean, like that, and that was a message. That's another podcast, but you yeah. know, my, my point, my point is, you know, one of the things Dr. Greer talks about is Dr. Greer finally got an, an audience with Trump and Pence, and he did it through somebody who's a friend of Trump of, of Pence's family. And, and he got into Trump it was like the last in the last six months of his presidency. Um, and and, and to, so that he could brief him on the papers that he knew that they never really put that he probably didn't read even if they did get it in front of him. Right. He said that what he what he found when he when he actually sat down and talk and had time to spend with Trump and Pence was they were completely fucking propagandized. They believed they had been convinced that there was an alien threat. That there that that the space force was a necessity, that that you know our national security, our ability to defend ourselves was all at stake. And Dr. Greer said he was aghast at how fucking propaganda. He said he was just starting to make progress with them and get them to see how far back this goes and how much DC has been politicized and propagandized into believing this fucking nonsense. And he said, and then you know, the election happened and it was, and he can't get an audience with, but I was like, B fucking Biden's Biden's an old, he's an old hawk. I mean, he's, he's certainly not interested in anything that, you know, has to do with demilitarizing anything. <laughs> yeah. He goes way back with those parties. Um, you know, I mean, so do the Clintons, which is how the parties have done this weird um, flip flopping, but uh, I mean, I'm, I'm just like, I'm, I'm just, I, it just blows me away. You know, I put myself in a Star Trek moment and I'm like, I, I actually love feeling like we are the, you know, 
a culture and a species that are coming up into the galactic, you know, into Dude, the galactic we have family. a seat waiting for us, man. Consciousness, right. And, and, and it's like, I want I I want the big reveal. I want the whole show. Yeah, but but, we're, but bro, we're not going to get like, we're not going to get that. We're just not going to no, get no, that. But, but we will be getting that over the course of of time. That and oh and yeah, when, when we when we when this place is flooded with additional energy from our position in the great year and our orbit around the galaxy, and there's so much energy in this space, there's going to be there's going to be. A lot of dis- uh, a lot of disclosure and also ascension of, of you know our bodies and our ability to you know, yeah consciously you know work within this space. So you know for me it's all I just love the movie how it plays out and and to yeah. get caught up in the movie more you know uh, there's some people that just go off the deep end into beautiful things and, and they need that in order to feel like they've got their hands on the sides of the walls. Right, right. For me, I'm just like. I I'm traversing learning, but I just, I, I know it's a big movie. It's a big show. Oh yeah, it's a, totally. It's a big show yeah. in the third dimension for us to reach our conscious maturity. Yeah. You know, and, and it's, we, and, and we, we are young, you know, I say it all the time to my kids. I'm like, we're, how could something like this happen? We are a very young, very young species. We we're, we are far along for our age, but we're also very immature. We're like that kid, you know, I was like, you remember uncle Paul's, kid he's like three years old but he's 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 about as big as a six-year-old and he gets to play with six-year-olds the problem is he doesn't know how to act you know what i'm saying that's like us right now you know we're we're we're, we're trying to figure it out and we're knocking shit over but uh you know i i, I have faith um i know that we you know we, we're 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 coming around we're, and that the consciousness of the planet is absolutely raising uh, there's no doubt in my mind. People are like, you know, it's really hard to see that. It's like trying to watch, you know, it's like the reason why you don't notice, um, you know, your plants growing or your, or your even, you know, even your kids. I mean, you notice, but you don't see it happening in, in real time, but yet it is happening literally in real time. Um, it's so gradual, but, but it's, it's there nonetheless. And, and if people, if you don't believe that, just not like pop in a movie from six years ago and 60 years ago and see if you could watch it. You know, see if you can sit through it because chances are you're going to be like, people watch this shit <laughs> while you're watching it. Cause it's just so right. you're, the, the consciousness has changed. That was like exactly. really highly entertaining back then. That was what people were thinking and doing and saying. That's why they made a fucking movie out of it. But these days it's like, what? We, right. we are evolving. We are getting, you know, more of it, but you know, God willing, we do it in time to kind of save this beautiful planet and, and, uh, and this species which is remarkable anyway that's my rant i love that rant that's <laughs> yo it's been real brother it's been too long since we had one of these uh chats and uh, i'm thrilled we got to do it yeah same here a retrograde is over my man <laughs> and all the yes. uh, all the challenges we had um, <laughs> yeah, no, i'm uh, i'm thankful for your uh, place in the world our relationship friendship Thanks, and, and i Feeling love being mutual. the champ I appreciate I, I, that. Like, you, it, the belt is yours, my friend. Status, my, <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. Hey, remember, man. today's enlightenment is tomorrow's ego trip. That's right. I got that. No I got that. And no also no remember, um, question the answers. That's my, 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 my new thing. Question the answers, right? Question the answers. Always um, got to it's been real, bro. Listen, um, all my love to Cody. One of these days, we, we, we got to have, you know, you and him got to come on, you know, with, depending on the schedule. Uh, let's make that happen, man. I would love to talk to him about his journey um, and becoming a warrior of light. And I love what he's doing. I, I'm, I'm, I'm his most recent fan. Uh, absolutely. Uh, as I love boxing. So seeing him is like, he, he's incredible to me. So we'll, we got to make that yeah, happen. Bro. For, I'm, for I'm sure. super stoked for that, man. Definitely. We'll, we'll definitely come back for sure. Awesome, man. All right, brother. You take care and have a good one. We'll talk soon. Yeah. Peace, bro. Peace.